Okay, so uh, welcome back. And um, so this actually, uh, this class was uh, really prepared way before this, uh, all these events that happened. Um, it was planned as, you know, a way to get us into Shavuos Parshas Bracious. As we know, we as a Mishnah Tzachavek of Shavuos Bracious, as I get to Yar, like um, the way that we set ourselves up on Shavuos Bracious, that's how the whole year goes. And every every time of year, every week, every um, every day has its uh, has its own energy, and especially you know Shabbos Bereshis, like being the first parsha of the year, it has like an a very inclusive energy that it includes within it like all the kachas that we're going to need for the whole year. Um, and the theme of Shabbos Bereshis is that we are um, unpacking you know all the inspiration of Chedesh Elul, Chedesh Tishrei. And uh, you know, figuring out how we're going to apply that for the year to come. Yeah, hi Rachel, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, so let me get back. So when we want to accomplish a goal, harnessing the energy of that time helps us to go more smoothly because there are opportune times during the year for accomplishing different things. So for example, let's say you wanted to plant a garden. You know, if I want to plant tomatoes, there's an optimal season for planting tomatoes. Or if I want to plant a tree, there's a certain time of year when I need to plant that tree. So it's the same thing with our Ruchni Stika Aveda. Every week has its own energy. And the what is the energy of Shabbos Bereshis? It's the idea of Yaakov Halachadarke. It's time to unpack all the energy of Elul and Tishrei and apply it to our lives to make lasting and meaningful change. So the way that we set ourselves up on Shabbos Bereshis is determined how we're how things are going to go um, the whole year. And you know we're now in a time when you know all of us are really. Uh, you know, struggling to figure out how how to make meaning of the events that are currently going on, um, how we're gonna, um, you know, what what kind of uh, Shabbos precious breaches are we having? You know, when our 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 Shemina Tzaras, our Silpas Taira was disrupted in such a violent and horrific way, and we're all you know trying to figure out a way how we can uh, find some kind of meaning, some kind of purpose this some way that we can take this horror and, and do something with it and apply ourselves somehow. So that's really what I want to address today. Um, there's a Hayam Yayim of uh, Beis Chajra next week that we have to live with the times. It's a vart of the al that we have to live with the times. Um, and each, each week's Parsha has many different lessons that we can take in our service of Hashem. Um, it's not just like nice stories, nice lessons, you know, okay, Parsha Sreshus, we learn this, and Parsha Nech, we learn this. Um, it's not just a nice lesson, it's that each, uh, the lesson of that week has a special relevance to that week and gives us a kayach, it gives us the strength to be able to implement it that week. So when we go through the Parshas of that week and we try to um, extract you know from that week the the practical lessons we're actually given the energies that we need in order to apply them in order to make those changes in our lives so being that we're in parsha's gracious the first parsha this week gives us a general power to set the tone for the whole year so with all that said, when we delve into the Parsha, when we look in the, into the Parsha of Rishon itself, it's really not all that pleasant. Um, the Torah starts off with chaos, you know, there was, there was chaos, there was void, there was darkness on the face of deep. The world was chaotic, and only then does it say that Hashem created light. And then when you look in the events of the parsha itself, we have right after the story of creation, we have Chetit Sadas. Adam and Chava sinned. They, they were kicked out of the garden. Hashem cursed them. Uh, they were, you know, Adam would have to work the land and the land would produce thistles and thorns. And, and Chava will have to go through the pain of childbirth and they're going to die. And then the next parsha, and the next uh, parak, we have Kai and Hevel get into fight. Kain kills Hevel. And by the end of the parsha, you know, Hashem regrets that he created the world. He's ready to wipe mankind off the face of the earth. So, so what's going on here? This is how we're going to set ourselves up for the whole year. This is what we're basing our whole year on, on this tayyub of ayu, on the chaytay tzadas, murder, wiping out mankind. Like, like this is the first parsha of the year. This is how we're going into the whole year. So 
we're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to like, what is the meaning and, and, and purpose um, of all these stories. But before we get into that, I want to just delve a little bit onto the concept of a cycle. Um, until the Torah, we finish uh, one cycle of reading the Torah. Then on Shabbos Rishis, we begin another cycle. And throughout the year, there are these mini cycles, like day and night is a cycle each day, um, every week, followed by Shabbos. We have every month a cycle, you know, 30 days. Then we have the cycle of Shemitah, seven years, Hakel, which we just completed, the cycle of Yevo. And there's also like generational cycles. So we, we see that time is like is cyclical and there are certain energies that come at certain times. They, they're, there's ebb and there's flow. Certain times are more musugal for certain things that um, the, the, an energy is more potent at a certain time. So in Yiddishkeit, every one of these cycles has a distinct energy and purpose. And each new go round of the cycle, every time we, we start a new cycle afresh, it's an opportunity to rebuild and recreate that cycle. So lately, um, you know, there's, there's this new term, I don't know if it's a new term, but it's been going around called like cycle, cycle breakers. Like we want to break the cycle. It means we look back at the past at all the horror, the trauma, whether from our childhood or our teachers or schooling, society, and we say, that's it. I'm going to break the cycle. I'm not going to pass on this horror and chaos and trauma to my children. I want to do things differently. But sadly, it often doesn't work out that way because when we're very focused on trying to break from the traumas of the past, we end up recreating them or we end up making new traumas. There's like there's a muscle like the waves of an ocean that each wave comes and says, I'm going to overflow the whole world. And then that wave comes and it crashes against the sand of the beach and then it recedes. And then the next wave comes and says, I'm going to overflow the whole world. And then it also comes up on the ocean and it recedes. So every generation people think, oh, we're going to be the one, you know, this generation, we're the one that's going to end all wars. We're the one that's going to break the generational cycles of violence. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to be different than all the generations that came before us. And we see that not only are we not, you know, getting better, unfortunately, in some ways we're getting worse. And sometimes it seems like we're going backwards. So despite our determination to break with the cycles of the past, sometimes it seems like we're, we're stuck in them and we keep recreating them, even though we we tell ourselves and we promise ourselves and, and we, we, you know, we, we the set of that as our goal, we're going to break the cycles and we're not able to. So, so why is that? Why is it that the more we try to break the cycle, the it seems like the more get we get stuck into it. So in Tyra, there's no such thing as cycle breaking. Each year, what we're doing is recreating the cycle. Each day, each moment, we're creating the cycle anew. The world is being created anew. So we're not here to break cycles or destroy cycles. We're here to build cycles. And that's why every year we have a new opportunity to start fresh, to start a new cycle, new cycle reading the Torah. We're starting again from Bracious. We're, we're starting all over. This is a new opportunity. Whatever came before, whatever negativities of the past, that's the past. We're here to build. We're here always to build and build and grow and grow. And part of that, part of our ability to constantly grow and, and regrow and recreate ourselves is this very strong belief that even negative events have a certain energy in them that we can extract and use them for good. So our idea is not that we're going to break from the past, it's that we're going to transform the past. We're going to find meaning and purpose and beauty and whatever we experience. And we're going to use that energy to propel us forward. And this is the true meaning of Chava. And this is also the difference between the month of Nisan, like the Yom Tov of Pesach, and the month of Tishrei. Because when the Yidin left Mitzrayim, they went out in great haste. Um, they, they had to make a break from the past. You know, they left Mitzrayim, very, very big hurry. They didn't even have time for the, for the dough to rise. They were just running out. Um, and it, only, it was only 49 days later that they received the Torah. And unfortunately, uh, right after they received the terror, what happened? They sinned and they made an eagle. So all that rushing and trying to break out of Mitzrayim, it was not really internalized. It was not. It was not something that they that they you know they left. They left Mitzrayim in a big rush. They tried to break through, but it wasn't completely fully internalized. So that's why they ended up you know sinning with the chet eagle because breaking 
or the past does not work. We need to rebuild ourselves. We always have to be focused on a forward motion, on a forward movement and not getting stuck in the past. When we tell ourselves that our purpose is to break the cycle, what we're actually doing is keeping ourselves stuck in the cycle, in the negative cycle. The more we try to say, I'm going to break the cycle, because then, you know, what happens? Like, let's say, you know, I'm trying to break the cycle. I'm not going to yell at my kids. So every time something happens and I get upset, oh gosh, I just, I, I, I was trying so hard to break the cycle and now I'm continuing the same cycle and now my kids are going to grow up with the same negative patterns and, and this is horrible. And then I get, you know, caught in this negative cycle all over again. If I tell myself, I'm not here to break any cycles, I'm here to build a cycle. That means even if yesterday I wasn't as perfect as I wanted to be and I didn't have the you know, the, the peaceful, calm energy that I wanted, that doesn't mean today, today I ha it's a new opportunity. Today is a new day. Today is a, today is a new year. Precious gracious is a new year. I have a new opportunity. I always have new opportunities to create and build a new healthier cycle. So I want to go back now to the idea of Tayu Vavayu, that the world um, starts with chaos, uh, you know, all these negative stories, and Kayin and Hevel and, and Hashem regretting creating the world and wiping out the world with Mabel. I mean, that's the whole story of Parshas Rashis. And how is that like the beginning? How, how is that how we, how we should cross from here? Um, so the Rebbe explains, and I, I, I said, I gave this over last night also at the Fabringen. Um, it was in Tashanun Aleph when also Israel was facing a similar situation. That was when there was the, it was right after the Kaisal riots. Um, that there were um, a group of Jews who went up to Harabayas and the Arabs um, reacted by throwing stones on thousands of Jews who were gathered at the Kaisal, as Chalma Itzukis, and this whole riot ensued. And then the world was condemning Israel for, for their reaction instead of condemning you know, the ones that were throwing stones on the Jews. So similar situation, not, not quite as you know extreme. Um, and... The Rebbe spoke in that tzach and asked the same question, like, why does the parsha start off with Tayyub Avayu? And the Rebbe explains that that is the whole purpose of creation. Not that Hashem, you know, created this perfect world and we came and we messed it up. Now, that's what a lot of us think. You know, Hashem put Adam into Gan Eden, this beautiful, perfect garden, and then Adam and Chava messed it up. But if we look deeper, you know, it wasn't like that at all. It started out as Tayu Vavayu and Cheshach. Like the Tayu Vavayu and Cheshach existed before we did. So we are not the ones that made the chaos. We didn't create this chaos in the world. We did not create the world in a chaotic state. So if your life is feeling chaotic right now, um, if for whatever reason, whether it's, you know, your house, the kids, the mess or whatever it is, um, if you're in a chaotic situation right now, you're only adding to the chaos if you start blaming yourself for it or blaming other people for it or wallowing in, in guilt and shame. You just have to remember, you know, the, the parasha begins, the chaos preceded us. It's not our doing. So, okay, so we didn't create the chaos. So why is it there? What is the purpose? Why does Hashem first uh, create the chaos and then the he are? So this is the core essential purpose of creation. Uh, the whole concept of Taihu means disconnection. It's Aylam Milash and Halam. Hashem created a world that conceals Hashem, a world that appears to be disconnected from Hashem. And when we, we are disconnected from Hashem, we are also disconnected from each other. And we're also, you know, there, there's a sense of like fragmentation. So Hasidus explains that before the world was created, there was Aylam HaTaihu. The, the world of chaos. Hashem created the world with 10 spheres, with 10 different creative energies. And in the world of Tayu, these spheres were all very, very, very intense, but they did not harmonize or integrate with each other. Um, this is all explained in the Maimar of Hecholtzu, the Maimar of the Rabbi Hashab. Um, so the world of Tayu uh, symbolizes disconnection. It's when you have these very, very intense energies, but they're not able to work together. They're not able to integrate and harmonize with each other. Um, so so this, this is what chaos means. This is chaos. We can have internal chaos or external chaos. If my house is chaotic, that means like nothing's in the right place. Nothing's, you know, where it belongs. If kids, you know, the kids are fighting with each other, they're arguing, there's just like a lot of friction, a lot of chaos. Everybody's in their own, their own little world and we're not integrating. We're not harmonizing with each other. Um, so I'm just going to quote a little bit from the Maimar Echotzu, which really goes a little deeper into this idea um, of chaos. So 
Okay, I'm going into the quote. Okay, so it says, um, in, the, in this source, um, the Midas of Tayu are not able to tolerate one another. For example, you have the Midas of Chesed that could not tolerate the Midas of Gura, and Gura cannot tolerate the Midas of Chesed. So there's, there's altogether 10 different spheres, um, ches, uh, which we're not going to go into great depth over here. But um, two of the creative energies are chesed and gevura. So chesed is that tendency to be kind, to be giving, to be loving, where gevura is more like boundary, more, um, more, more strict, setting limits, setting rules. So let's say somebody is like a very, very chesed oriented type of person. Like they're very, they're very kind, they're non-judgmental, they're very easygoing, be sure, anything you need. Um, so Chesed, very overflowing with love. Gavura person is a lot more structured, a lot more driven by rules and boundaries. So if someone is very, very, very chesed, like very, very chesed oriented, they may not be able to relate to a Gavura person. And a person who is very much Gavura about rules and boundaries, they may not be able to relate to an extreme chesed person. We say like, you're letting people walk all over you, or there's got to be some kind of rules, or we can't accept everybody. We can't let everything go. So we have one extreme chesed, one extreme gura, and they're not integrated, and they're not even able to listen to each other and respect each other and understand each other. So that's the world of Tayu. Each midah is very, very strong, very, very intense, but they don't leave room for the other. That's where we have the world of Tayu, of chaos. So how is it... Um, Okay, so what is the end result when we have these very, very intense midas, these, um, and they're, they're each shining and falling in their full intensity, but they cannot uh, tolerate or integrate with each other? The end is shvira. The end is that they, they will, there will be a breakdown because if each energy is so strong and it cannot cope or tolerate the other ones, there's, they don't leave room for the other ones. It's just going to all fall apart. It's going to it's going to break apart. So there's this concept of shvira sakelim that Hashem created the world of Tayu, uh, but they, because there was no tolerance, there was no interaction, it all fell apart, and the sparks fell down into this world, uh, into the world of tikkun. So what is what is tikkun? So tikkun is when we have the ability to harmonize and integrate with each other. So that means that the mida is each have to become a little more humble. They have to become a little less intense, but they also have to leave room for each other. They have to be able to find space for each other. When we are able to hold space for each other, that's how we integrate. That's how we come to the world of Tikkun. So whenever we have a world where, you know, everybody's very intense, but very much like I'm out for myself. This is what I want. This is what I need then we know that that's klipa. This is the whole idea of pirud, the whole idea of separation, of friction, arguing with one another, not able to get along, not able to find room, make space for each other, understand each other, respect each other. That all comes to the world of tayu. And the key is to move from tayu into the world of tikkun. So what is the, the way that we can move from Taihu into Tikkun. So the concept of Taihu is extreme uh, self-absorption and disconnection. I'm only able to see my own needs. I'm only able to see my own point of view. I cannot interact or integrate with other people. So the, the world of Tikkun is when we correct and we heal and we integrate. How do I know when I'm in the world of Taihu? Whenever I'm overly focused on myself, whenever I feel myself in my own brain space, I'm comparing myself to others, I may be feeling resentful, I may be feeling like I'm not enough, I'm not measuring up to someone else's um, ideal, or what I'm doing is not worthwhile because I'm not doing it as well as somebody else. So whenever I'm like wrapped up in myself, what I need and what I want, then I know I'm in the world of Tayu. And you can actually feel it in your body when you're in the state of Taihu, because it, you know, when you get that sense, like I'm falling apart, I'm cracking up. You know, we use these expressions, falling apart, cracking up, breaking up, I'm breaking down. That's what Shmira Sakela means. It means that there's so much intense emotions inside of me that I'm unable to integrate and I'm unable to get, get it to work together. 
And eventually that's going to lead to us falling apart or sonically to a family falling apart, a relationship falling apart. When we're too much in our own heads, we're too much in our own needs, that's what Shreya Sakelem is. Now, the funny thing is that everyone will agree, you know, medically, psychologically, um, you know, on every level, everyone agrees that being able to get out of your own head is the key to good mental health and physical health and psychological health. So why is it that if we find it so hard to do that? Like, it's so simple, you know, get out of your own head, look at look at somebody else, think about somebody else. Why is it so hard for us um, to get out of our own heads? Uh, you know, being inside my own head is going to lead me to to crash and fall apart. And all I have to do is to, to get into the world of Tikkun is focusing on other people. Why is it so, 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 so hard to do that? Well, because Hashem created the world that way. Hashem created the world. He gave each of us a, a sense of ourselves. And that sense of ourselves is actually necessary for the world to exist. The, the, the sense of independence is actually a key element in being able to have some of Hashem's creative powers. So we need that a little bit of that energy. We need a little bit of that sense of ourselves, the, the sense you know that comes from being an independent person, being a strong person, having my own views, having my own mind, having my own will. That's actually something that Hashem gave us, but then we have to take that, that strength that we have, that, that independence, that, that you know, individual will, and we have to use that now to integrate with other people. So even though it seems so obvious and so simple, you know, just stop thinking about yourself so much, stop being so self-absorbed, stop being so narcissistic, just focus on other people. It sounds very simple, but in practice, it's very, very hard to do that because that's, you know, Hashem placed that challenge in us. Hashem gave us that, um, you know, that sense of ourselves. So the Taihu actually has kind of a a, a dual, um, you know, it's, it's like double-sided. Because on the one hand, yes, Taihu is um, self-centeredness, self-absorption, leads to chaos. On the other hand, it has a very, very strong, intense energy. And we need that intense energy. So our goal really is to extract the from the Taihu energy and being able to bring it into Tikkun, being able to harmonize it with other people. Okay, so let's say I'm in uh I'm in a, a Taihu state. The first step is just to be able to identify when I'm in Taihu. So I just want to kind of uh workshop that a little bit, you know, I want a little bit of input from other people, a little bit of a discussion. What does it feel like uh, to be in Taihu? Like do you you experienced uh, being in Taihu when you felt closed off, disconnected from other people, uh, either maybe feeling um, inadequate or just stuck inside your own head, stuck inside what are other people thinking about me, or times that you felt you were falling apart, cracking up. I want you to think about the last time you were in that state and, and what was it that, that, that triggered it? You know, did anyone identify with the feeling of being in Taihu? Anybody? Uh, you can you can chat. Well, do you consider Yay. any part of this tohu, or is that something separate? I'm sorry, you Rachel, decide, I couldn't hear you. About your feelings, like what's going on in your life, is that something that's self-centered and narcissistic, or would you classify it differently? If you're like coping with a very difficult challenge, you know like, feeling anxiety about you know, stuff going on in your life, you like is that? Your body into your bed in the way that's so good, and then I'll come back. Okay. Um. Okay. So a uh, person. Is, okay. So let's say you're going. Then you're right now. You can't be jumping around. You're you're going through something that is difficult, and and we all you know we all agree that it's difficult. It's it's a struggle. It's a challenge. So what's the difference between someone who's going through the challenge? In a Taihu way, like something that, that is very self-centered versus going through it in a more in a less self-centered. You gotta lay down nicely. Quietly. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to mute everybody. Um, Quiet. I'm trying to figure that out. Quiet. <laughs> Okay. You can ask people to mute themselves. Okay, can everyone mute unless you want to uh, join the discussion? Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't really see. Uh, okay, so 
I'll, I'll, I'll share my perspective. Um, when, when, what it means to be in a Tayhu state is basically when I'm feeling uh, disconnected from other people, when I'm feeling stuck in my own head, I'm stuck in my own needs. Um, so even if I'm going through a struggle, so, you know, there's also other people that are being affected by it. So if I'm only able to think about how this uh, struggle is affecting me, and not, I'm not able to think about how other people are being affected by it, then I would say that, yes, that's in a state of Tayhu. Now, I, I want to be clear, if someone is in a state of Tayhu, the point here is not to condemn or blame or, or wallow in guilt and shame while we're, why we're in Tayhu, because you know, that, that's part of the point that Hashem created the world in the beginning with Tayhu. Like, that's part of the creation of the world. It was... Um, it, it it came before us. It became before we were even here. And it's it's really our job. That's our you know our goal is to be able to move from Tayu to Tikkun, and it actually helps us cope better with the situation. So it's really about let's learn a new a new skill. It's not oh you're in Tayu, you're you're awful. You know you're you're so wrapped up in yourself. You know if someone is you know going through a going through a difficulty, we're not going to start condemning them and blaming them for being a little focused on it or, or fetching about it. Or you know when you tell a person that's going through a difficulty, like oh just stop fetching and just stop complaining and look at the bright side and uh, you know what about other people that are going through worse things? That that's not helping anybody. It's really for us to. Um, to, to be able to identify, be able to identify with the else says, you know what, I'm in a, I'm in a tell you state right now. I'm feeling like I'm cracking up. I feel like I'm falling apart. I'm in my own head a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm in tell you, I'm in a tell you state right now. How can I move into, how can I move into Tikkun? So what is the key? How do we get into Tikkun? So the key to getting into Tikkun is just being, being able to focus on the needs of other people. Just being able to stop, stop that process, stop that process that's going in, in, on inside my own head of what's going to be, what's going to happen with me, and how are other people reacting to me, and getting out of that headspace and being able to focus on other people. And it's so much healthier and you'll feel better when we're able to get out of our own headspace. So it's not, oh, Tikkun is bad, Tikkun is good, stop being bad, be good. No, it's being in Tayu is unpleasant, it's uncomfortable, and it's not it's not healthy. So I want to live my life in a healthier, more integrated way. And the key to that is going from Tayu to Tikkun. Uh, just a couple examples. Um, one is the story, there's, there was a woman who had an awful personality. And she really had very few friends, and nobody liked her. And she was very self-centered and she went to a lot of different therapies and she's in therapy for years and nothing was really uh, helping. Um, and finally, she asked Rebbe what to do. She gave, gave, wrote Rebbe a very long story with the whole history of all the different um, therapies, et cetera. Um, and what should she do? So the Rebbe gave her very simple advice. He said, when you're at a meal with other people, I want you to look around and see if uh, somebody needs a fork or somebody needs a napkin or somebody needs salt and you should offer to get up and give it to them. Very, very simple advice to just look around and see what do other people need. Is there anybody um, who needs something from me right now? Can I be helpful in this situation? Can I be useful? And that's what gets us out of our own head and our own struggles and our own problems. And even when we have our own problems, they're not necessarily going to go away. But we're less focused on our own problems and more focused on how I can contribute and help someone else in this situation. That also lessens our own uh, pressure and tension and anxiety. Um, Okay, there's a comment. What if, um, okay, so some, some people are socially awkward and I'm socially awkward too. So I, I identify with that a lot. Um, sometimes, you know, not everybody finds it easy to make conversation with other people. So not everybody finds it, um, you know, and, and it could be, you know, I might, you know, some people do fine in uh, certain settings and not in other settings, or I can get along well with this type of person, not with that type of person. And that all comes from that kind of Taihu energy, like there's Chasa types and there's Gura types and there's, you know, there's lots of different types of people. And, and we are more comfortable with people that we could relate to. And, and some people have that more 
gregarious personality. And I think in one of the classes in the, that I gave in the past, I, I, we talked about um, how there's Aish, Ruach, Mayim, and Afar. And if, if you're an Aish person, you're like very uh, um, intense. You're the type of person that can get up and lead a lead an army or lead a project and a you know, very ish dominant type um then there's the the, the ruach type they're very fun loving they're excited excitement and they they're fun and they can dance and sing and bring joy and then if you're an offer type you're more quiet you're more introverted i'm an offer hi um you're quiet more introverted you like to study you like intellectual things you're more quiet you're not into social life and then mayim is a type that really values relationships and really values you know they they like to host and they you know they bring a lot of beauty and harmony so it's different types of people and this is a big generalization of course you know everybody has their own nuances but there's four general uh, types of people um so if we're like let's say I am the, you know, I'm the like, like the, uh, the offer type. So that means I'm not very social. I'm not very, um, I'm not the type that's going to be the life of the party ever. So um, a, a Taihu way of saying it would be to be like, oh, I'm, I, I, this is terrible. Um, it's terrible that I'm uh, I'm so introverted and nobody likes me and I have no friends and and I'm never you know I can never host because I'm too awkward and I can never get my house nice enough and and my food's not going to be good all that rumination like all the things feeling inadequate feeling like I'm not good the tikkun way would be to say look Hashem created ish types ruach types mayim types offer types Hashem created all these different types of people Hashem created all these different midas and as I created me with my individual personality, my individual situation, I don't have to be like everyone else. I don't have to measure up to anyone else's standards. And Hashem gave me these specific situations, circumstances, personality, in order for me to do my individual shlokos. That's how we come to like this hiskalos. Hiskalos means like inclusiveness. I mean, that mind that I just mentioned, the heichotsu, um, the Rebbe, was saying that Yaakov says, uh, Yesh li ko, I have everything. And Asa said, Yesh li rab, I have a lot. Because when you have a lot, that means I have a lot of like different stuff. I have all these different things, you know? It's like, I have, let's say, a lot of furniture. Okay, I have a lot of chairs and a lot of um, things, you know, a lot of stuff. And we all know that having a lot of stuff is not necessarily like the best thing because you might have a lot of stuff and have no place to put it. But he said, I have a lot. And, and Yaakov said, I usually call, I have everything that I need. I have just, I have just enough, you know, I have whatever I have, I have enough for myself. I usually call. So having call, having everything is better uh, than having a lot. And because when you have a lot, you just want more and more and more. So this feeling of, of I have enough, I have I have everything that I need in, in my situation in order to serve Hashem in this situation, and that I do have something uh, to give, I do have um, something to contribute to the world because Hashem decided that, not because other people decided that, not because other people are... Um, you know, judging me and, and decide, no, I, I am who I am because this is how Hashem made me. These are the circumstances Hashem gave me. And that's how we move out of that toihu into the tikkun. Tikkun is when the, like the spheres are able to integrate with each other and they're able to work together. Um, so it's when people are able to work together because we each are able to say, Hashem created the world and there's enough room for all of us. There's enough space for all of us. We all have something that we can contribute. We all have different medias. We all have different strengths. And it's just finding a way that I can help and I can contribute. And, you know, sometimes I do, you know, you could do something and it might, it might not be help, helpful to everybody in the world. I don't have to help everyone. I don't need to be there for everyone. I just need to be there for the people that, that need me. The people that need me will be there. And I can't like get upset um well why why don't that why didn't that other person you know why doesn't that other person like me no i have the people that i have the people that, that appreciate me i have the people that i can I have an influence on the other people you know so that's how we get out of that headspace out of that tell you space where i'm overly focused on myself and i'm overly focused on my own needs um what is another example um of you know some people are more naturally um you know, inside their own heads and other people are just, you know, born able to focus on other people. And again, this is different personalities, different types, and Hashem created us differently. And we all have our own Aveda and our own journey. So if you recognize yourself as a little more inside your own headspace, the point is not to make anyone feel bad. It's to say, 
I can move. I'm able to get out of Taihu, out of that my own headspace into someone else. So I have a daughter, Rivka. Some of you know her, Baruch Hashem. She just turned 11. Um, she's born with Down syndrome. She has like this very, very beautiful quality, even from a very, very young age, of, of just naturally tuning in to other people. Like that story of the Rebbe, like if anyone needs a fork or a napkin or whatever, she was always like the first one to notice that someone needs something, that someone needs, someone at the table needs something. Even when she was like in preschool, like preschool teachers would tell me like how she would always, you know, notice what other people need and, and run to get it for them and help them. And when she was like little, we made, she had a birthday. She just had a birthday two days ago. When she was little, uh, she had a birthday party and we, 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 had, we bought ice cream for the kids and I was serving the ice cream to everyone. And I said, oh, Griff Guts, your birthday today. So you get first. So she's only five years old and she, gave everyone else ice cream first before she took herself. Um, and she's only five. So that's just like a natural me that she was born with that to be that that tuned in and sensitive to other people. Uh, some of us, you know, we, ha we have to work hard on that. We have to work hard to get out of Taihu and into Tikkun and into more like noticing other people and um, observing and, and trying to feel what other people are feeling and not just, you know, focusing on our own needs. The point, again, is not to blame anyone or feel guilty. Um, but the point is maybe, you know, so one person in Shama could be rooted in Gvura. I don't know. But even if by nature, you're not the type that's so tuned into other people, we could still train ourselves to notice other people more and make an effort. And, and trust me, people do appreciate it when we're trying and making an effort, you know, to be more sensitive, to be more considerate, to to notice them and express appreciation and, and trying to be helpful. Um, I want to caution also, there has to be like out of a genuine desire to connect to other people and meet their needs. It can't be uh, to fill my need because I'm lonely and I'm falling apart and I need human connection. So therefore I am going to try to connect with you. And then I'm going to have a lot of kindness against you if you don't reciprocate the way that I wanted. It has to really be about looking at somebody else and thinking about them. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they're cold or tired or hungry. You know, that's always like the Jewish mother, you know, the Jewish mother stereotype. You know, are you hungry? Are, do you need a coat? Do you need this? Do you need that? And sometimes it could be like overbearing. Um, but it's also, um, you know, it's, it's just a natural midrach. Uh, we just have this, this natural instinct, you know, to care about other people. And are you thirsty? And are you sure you're okay? Um, every one of us has an area where we can help. So um, it's child is gracious, and the way we set ourselves up on child is gracious, that's how the whole year goes. Um, we're now coming from one of the most chaotic moments, you know, for the Jewish people in our generation, like since um, I was actually born right before the Yom Kippur War. So, uh, you know, in, in, in my lifetime, I guess you could say, um, at least in my memory, um, it's really hard to grasp, you know, this all took place on Shemina Tzaras, Simchas Taira, you know, Shemina Tzaras, the word Atzaras means like Hashem holding us back another day just to show his love for us. And that was the day we're supposed to like internalize everything from Elul and Tishrei, uh, the height of our Simcha, our love for Hashem, our love for the Taira. Um, and, and on that day for this, you know, to erupt is something that we don't know why we don't understand i'm not here to offer any kind of just justifications explanations i just know that you know a lot of us are in that tell you who space right now we're feeling confused overwhelmed falling apart cracking up don't know how to focus um and the key to us healing and getting into that tikkun not trying to uh, explain or rationalize what happened is each of us to figure out what is our role in this situation. Because again, Tikkun is when we all realize we all playing a role. We are all creation of Hashem. We are all have a mission of Hashem. We all have our own unique purpose. Help each other, support each other, figure out what is my area where I can be helpful and do that. You know, last night there was a gathering here in Kingston and different uh, people sharing, like, even if it's just, you know, taking care of your children, how, how you're going to show up for your own children. Um, you know, some people have singing talent or art or organizational abilities, or they can raise money. We, we all have to just figure out our own thing. Um, the two nights ago, there was in a Sheikh Abad, uh, I don't know, some, some of you might have attended, and Shandy Jacobson shared a story of her father um, during the War of Independence. So he was he was a buffer at that time, and his family was in Israel. Um, they had escaped communism, and they ended up in Eretz And he came, in 1948, he came to 770 to learn in the Lulav Teshiba. 
And at that was that was the same time when the war broke out. Um, and his father wrote him a letter saying, you know, your two brothers are serving at the front and maybe you should also come back and you should fight for Ertisro. So he said, you know, um, I'm here, uh, I'm a chassid, I'm going to write to the the Frida Grebe and ask what I should do. Should I go back to Ertisro or should I stay here in Yeshiva? And the Frida Grebe's answer was that a soldier is not the one that's fighting a battle in the front. A soldier is the one that stays at his post. That means, yes, some soldiers, it's their job to go to the front. Some soldiers have to, you know, they have other jobs. So we each have to do our job. Some people are fighting at the front and we're going to support them or we're going to encourage them, you know, morally, spiritually, physically, in whatever way we can. You know, people are, are raising money for all kinds of needs that people in our sister will need for the Chayelim or, or just regular citizens. We each, you know, if, if you're able to contribute money or you're able to contribute your efforts to be able to join, you know, those efforts, or it could just be the spiritual battlefield, just, you know, creating that sense of shlemos within ourselves. Um, you now, the, the Rebbe spoke often how shlemos are, shlemos ha'am, shlemos ha'tayra, they're all interconnected, like the complete uh, land of Eretz Yisrael and the complete Tyra, the complete Jewish people, you know, love of Hashem, love of Tyra, love of Jewish people. This is how we have that integration. You know, we'll, we, we know that our sense, like our our, our sense of shlemos, our sense of integration and wholeness and unity comes from the Torah. Um, there's there's a Zaya that says that uh, the world has different kufais, uh, different periods. Um, there was 2,000 years of Taihu, 2,000 years of, of Torah, and 2,000 years of Mesa Mashiach. So the first 2,000 years from when the world was created until Avram was born was all that world of Taihu. It was uh, Adam, you know, Chetet Zadas, and then Cain, and then the, and then the Mabel, and and all that was just all chaos until Avraham Avinu was born. Then we entered into the, the period of preparation for Matan Taira. So then we had the, the two year, 2,000 years of Taira. And then we had, um, after the basement was destroyed, then started the preparations for Yemais and Mashiach. So every, you know, the beginning of the world was in chaos because the Taira was not yet given. And the Torah is the key, really, to finding that shlemos and integration. So, if we're ever confused or in doubt, you know, what is my tafkid at this time? We can always look in Torah, you know, consult with somebody, consult with the Rav, consult with Mashbia, figure out what does Torah have to say um, about, you know, what is my individual avoda. Sometimes when we put too much pressure on ourselves, um, that I have to do this and I have to do that, um, and if I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, I'm not good enough. You know, that's not coming from my Yitzhah That's not coming from the side that is um, of Kedusha. That's just coming to help to try to get me to fall apart and fall down. Um, so if we, if, you, if you do have doubts, you know, what, what is my specific, um, you know, purpose in this moment? How can I be helpful? How can, what can I contribute? You know, you ask a Rav or Mashbiah, get some guidance. Um, so last um, Elo, um, actually, last summer we started on Tuba I had a wonderful uh, group of women. We started on Tuba of, and every week um, we joined together for an hour. We learned different ideas from the parish of that week and also discussed, like, how can we bring it back? How can we bring it down very practically um, to prepare for El and, you know, for Chesh El and Tishrei and really doing like our Chesh Ben and uh, doing our Veda. And it really, I mean, I, I found for me, it, it really had a very um, big impact because. Like I never really uh, before took the time every single week, you know, starting from Tuba Av to, you know, go through and, and, and try to, you know, do something structured every single week to learn from the parasha and to apply it practically and to do that, you know, with a group of other women who are also committed to, to growth and learning and change. Um, so it was a wonderful experience, um, you know, doing that group in the summer. And I was planning on relaunching um, this group to start from Hashem's Breaches and then go through the next six weeks. And, you know, there's they're, they're very like momentous, um, Parshas, you know, Nayach, um, Lach, you know, the birth of Avram Avinu and, and the birth of the Jewish people, you know, it's all in like the next few Parshas. So I had been planning uh, for a long time to relaunch this course for Shabbos Parishas. And then, of course, the events um, intervene and it's looking very, very different than what I had planned. So I am inviting everyone, all Jewish women, to join with me for the next um, 
six weeks for one hour a week to learn some ideas from the parsha and also like do practical exercises to internalize those lessons to help us go from chaos to connection from Tayu to Tikkun. So there's a special kayak when we join together to do this work, when we do it as a tzibor. On a practical level, we feel less alone, we draw strength to each other. And spiritually, there's also strength, um, you know, in a tzibor, uh, at least 10 people. My goal, I, I want, I hope at least 10 women will join one hour a week over Zoom. Um, the next six weeks, you know, they're really, really very pivotal, not only on the physical battlefield, but also the spiritual battlefield. You know, next week we have Parshas Nayach, we have the Mabel. The world, again, is in a state of confusion, and the you know, the models represent the chaos of the world. And the solution is by Teba, to come to the words of Torah and Tefillah. Whenever we feel that like sense that I'm being, I'm drowning and I'm, I'm getting you know caught up in this. The answer is always by Teba, to go into the words of Torah and Tefillah. That gives us like this calming sense that it, it grounds us and it stabilizes us. And then we go on to Lachachan. The other parashas are the stories of the Avais, the birth, the, all the Shvatim. So every week is very profound, very symbolic, many deep lessons, many wells of strength that we can draw from in these, in these times, and it can really help us and help the entire Jewish people. So I would, uh, I would like to invite everyone to sign up for this course, and due to the events of this time, I am waiving all fees. There's no cost to join. I just want Jewish women to join together so that we can experience the life uh, giving words of Torah, the Divrei Likim Chaim. And in this way, we can give life and strength to our brothers and sisters in Eretz HaKadosh. So the sign up is very simple. I'd just like to send an email to chayeshachat613 at gmail.com. I'm going to put it in the chat box and you just write the words I'm in. So it's chayeshachat at gmail.com and just type the words I'm in uh, to sign up. Um, I really hope I get at least 10 people because I, like I said, the, the real, um, the real change comes not just from like reading something and learning something. It really comes from doing the exercises and discussing together. How, how can I uh, implement that? How can I bring it down? Uh, into my life and, and and make like real real changes you know and it's in a very non non-judgmental way it's uh you know for those of who have been uh following with me for a while you know i'm very um you know my um motto is no guilt no blame no shame no fear we avoid any message that makes people feel guilty or ashamed we don't shame anyone for where you're holding right now the idea is just wherever you are now that's where we're going to grow from there and if you uh, you know, sometimes we grow, we go up, we go down, depending on our circumstances, but wherever you are, even if you fell, we can always get back up, like I said about that cycle. Um, wow, <laughs> thank you. I got Rachel. Okay, so the class, I um, I like to do it every Tuesday, um, and I usually, I mean, it works best for me 8.30 to 9.30, but for some people it works better at 9, so I'm just going to um, tentatively make it Zoom every Tuesday night, 8.30 to 9.30. And I'm sharing in the chat box, chayashakat613 at gmail.com. And just uh, type the words I'm in. Just send me an email and then you'll be on the list. And every week I'll, I'm going to send out um, the link to the Zoom class. I'm also going to send out like a little outline of what's going to be discussed. Because like I said, I, I really... Um, I really want to invite like participation of people sharing their own ideas um, because it's really about not just the learning piece, but, you know, the integrating it into ourselves and, and how does this apply to me? So that's really important. Um, opening the floor to you, anybody who has um, questions, comments, happy to take questions. I just love your idea about the not breaking a cycle, but revisiting it to transform it. I think that's just like a mind shift, like thinking differently. I think it's beautiful. I'm going to think about that for a while. Yeah. And I think um, a lot of times, you know, we're going to be talking about this next week in, in the parsha of, of, of the, by the Teva, like Parsha's Nayach, Abayala Teva, that sometimes like there, there could be like one, uh, one quote or one idea that we just sit with and whenever we're in uh, like a mobile state or a taihu state and we're able to just hold on to even one thought 
that can ground me and stabilize me. And I know that there's a lot of these meditations and all these things that are floating around that come from non-Jewish sources, but you know, if we can have our own terror sources that, you know, for those grounding exercises or just to reduce anxiety or reduce, you know, that, that stress, whatever, whatever it is that we're facing. Um, so I have my own little list next week. We're going to be talking about it, how we can each develop our own, you know, uh, our own, uh, little library of quotations or piskamim or, or thoughts that really help us and nurture us and you can share notes with each other you know this is what I find helpful when I'm going through this situation and this is what I feel hopeful you know etc um any other questions comments thoughts love to hear from you okay so Mr. Shem, anyone that wants to join um I shared the email address and um I'm also going to be sharing the recording. Some people are in different countries. Some people are in Israel. They are not able to join now because of the time zone, but I wish more people will join um, from uh, after watching the recording. Um, like I said, I, I hope for at least 10 people, but if it's less, it's also good. Uh, even one person, it's so helpful and we all can learn and grow from each other. So thank you all so much for, uh, for joining. And that's my email address if anyone wants to message me. Um, I'm going to end the recording now. Um, so thank you, and I hope to see you next week on Tuesday evening, 8.30. I'm going to share a Zoom link with you.